Hello and welcome to another week's edition of the Weekly Waller Review Show. Another stellar week for Team Waller. It was. Very memorable. Very memorable. Why so? Uh, obviously Winks won her third Cox Plate, Charlie. That was one of the reasons. But no doubt uh, you'll tell us a few more winning stories shortly. But um, what a great day it was. Uh, um, yeah, it's good to see everybody getting behind a great horse. Um, and we're very proud to be associated with her and um, the good story it brings to racing. Um, so many yeah, fans following Winks now and it's certainly, I think, telling a good story. So uh, to win three Cox Plates, so that's basically over a period of what, 750 days she's, she's been the champion of the Cox Plate. Um, to make set it. two track records in, the, in, in those three Cox Plates and also with the other Cox Plate was by the biggest winning margin so might not have won by a big space but did break the track record again and can't say and who remembers second anyway? Who, who knows Charlie? You do when you run second I can remember that. <laughs> and also uh, another very um, Who shot the bar? Yeah, almost as many fans as Winks. My word. Yeah, and I think good for the stable to, to, to show that we do try and look after our horses and keep them racing for as long as long as they're happy to. And um, be around if she could stay around as long as he's been around. Didn't he? Yeah. So um, who shot the barman? He's earned himself another another run in this year's Melbourne Cup. Okay, then we in Sydney we had I'm Serious, who is a Good win. Yeah, very good win for Mr. Hare and the family, uh, making it two in a row, two in a row, and yeah, I think she's a filly with a, big, a lot of upside, and there was plenty of good placings there as well, Charles. And then up in Doombin, we had the rumour file, the mighty rumour file. All states were firing, and I can tell you, uh, a few of the owners of the rumour file were at Mealy Valley, and they got just as much kick out of that horse winning as uh, the owners of Wheat. So that's what racing's all about. It's not just the Cox Plates, the Old Cups. Um, yeah, there's a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of fun to be had and just a great sport that we're in. And, and the horses make it all that much worthwhile. And also then on Sunday we had a nice winner for Star Thoroughbreds and Bella Success. We did, Charlie. Um, yeah, so the state, all states are firing. And uh, that was a $60,000 race. Um, it's a great show on Denise the other night on the, um, the Sky Racing. Great to win. Great to win. That was a fantastic story and what a fantastic lady to work with. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed the show. As did I. Right, oh, well, we better press on. We're going straight into Flemington where we have in the Colburn Club Sambro. Um, He's been running good races, so I think he'll be better as a gilding next preparation, but earned his trip to one. Okay, and Chaonic. Very promising Very horse, yeah, tough draw, but Flemington's not too much of a concern. You see four lines change from Caulfield, Reedy Valley to Flemington, so that's in his favour. Um, he couldn't have been any more impressive last start at Randwick and his maiden win, so let's hope he can um, go out to the spelling paddock on a winning note and come back in the order and take on some better horses. Okay, then into the Group 2 Wakeful, we have Improvised, Barrier 6. Yeah, well, she was a little bit disappointing last start at Caulfield, but didn't have a lot of luck, and Hugh Barnum was straight off her to say, look, press on towards the Wakeful, so that's what we've done. Work's been good through the week. Okay, into the Lexus. We have Allwood heading down there tonight. Well, he's been down there before and performed well. I think winning at Flemington quite impressively one day. He's been up here and done a number of races. We've had a number of races including success. Very unlucky last start to run into a wet track when running second in a listed race. I think he's better than that run and on a good track we'll hopefully see them on Saturday. But just remember he has been up for a while. Long prep. Long prep. And into the Coolmore we have Andaz, Barrier 14, Ben Mellon. Yeah it's, it's a long shot um, but he has won up the straight before. Ben's um, never been beaten on him. Well that's good then. I hope he can make it three in a row. So, um, yeah, it seems logical to, to give Ben the ride, and um, look, he's, he's a well-bred horse, he's uh, very fit, it's a big field, and you never know in this type of race, the stables had a lot of success in it over the last few years. 
Okay, then into the Meyer Classic, we have Fox Plate, Barrier 12, Kieran McAvoy. Yeah, I think weight for age, or getting back to weight for age will suit her. Uh, obviously drawn out a little bit, but again, Flemington shouldn't be too much of a concern. Her work's been very good over the past week. French Emotion on the quick backup, Barrier 6. Disappointing last Saturday at Mooney Valley. She was giving away a bit of weight to her rivals. And Hugh simply said she's a similar horse to those and giving away weight, so it was hard. So she ran second in the race last year. She was in better form last year, but let's hope she can bounce back. Can't fault her on work. And we also have Shalali Barrett, who's fourth emergency, sorry. Yeah, Barrett so 18. likely that she'll run in the Kennedy Mile, Group 1 million dollar race where she's drawn barrier two so Michael D writes um, her work's been very good Jo Marrera wrote her last start and said that she's she's ready to fire in a big race um, and step her up and trip so that's exactly what we've done and just need to announce the luck against the boys and into the derby we have Tangled Winkers go on just like performance yeah his work's been good he worked with him on Tuesday morning Blake Shin was very happy he said the right Preparation for a derby. He said the two runs over 2,000 metres, preparing them for the 2,500 metre race on Saturday. Well bred colt, good strong horse. He's coped well with his training. Um, I guess there's some doubt whether he's going to stay. Um, he is out of an Oaks winner, but he's by champion Sire Snitzel, who's of course a sprinter. But hey, horses don't get champion status for being sized for just being noted for winning two-year-old races or sprinting races. So I'd say he'll leave a mark with middle and long distance horses as well. Okay, into the Kennedy Mile. We've almost got half the field in there. So we had to start off with McCurry, Brenton Abdullah, Barrier 13. Very unlucky in the race last year. Got an awkward gate this year. Um, Brenton's a good lightweight rider at the 53 and a half. Interestingly, there's only three or four above him at the weight. So obviously a very even field this year. And then we have Tom Melbourne, Glenn, ba Glenn Boss, back down to right hand. Yeah, um, Glenn obviously knows him very well. Um, no luck last start with the Turek. Nor in the runs prior to that, he's drawn wide most of his most of his starts as preparation. So finally gets a good gate, hopefully he jumps well. Settles well midfield and is strong up that long Flemington straight. Okay, and egg tart, Kieran McAvoy back aboard. Yeah. Touch disappointing at Caulfield, as a number of horses were. I'm looking forward to getting her to Flemington, where, of course, she's won before. Um, she'll get a bit of room from that gate. Nice light weight. She sits truly at the 52 kilogram weight. Obviously runs against the boys, but she's got two group ones next to her name. Brilliant first up run against Deploy, running second. And just forget she went around at Caulfield last start. Okay, we also have Omer Sword. Tommy Barry takes the road. Yeah, not a bad gate for her. I think she's drawn about barrier eight. So, um, yeah, she likes a bit of room. She got hemmed up, pretty awkward spot at Caulfield. Got an easy run, but just didn't want, didn't, couldn't quicken when she was able to, or wasn't able to quicken when she wanted to. So her work's been good through the week. Um, she's got a good race in her. She's gonna have to pull out a finger though to beat these ones. Okay, we've already touched on Shillelagh, so we'll go straight to all our roads and barrier one, Jeff Lloyd. Yeah, he's had two two runs in Australia and drew wide on each occasion. He hasn't been running bad races. In fact, last start, Kieran got off from City Red particularly well. So, good draw is going to see him get a nice soft run. And um, he's a Group 2 winner in New Zealand. He's had two runs. Should have a rock hard fit for the mile on Saturday. Okay, we'll head straight to Rose Hill now. Home track, Sparky Lad, Barrier 5, Fielder 9. Yeah, he's well placed in this race. He's been sharp in his work. Lee Magorian rides claiming the three kilos. Um, Lee's riding very well as we've, we touched on the last few weeks. And we also have Unforgotten, impressive last start winner. Very impressive. Um, we've got a big opinion of her. Um, obviously, it's just about um, getting her confidence up and can hopefully continue on her winning way and, and joining up for some better races in the, in the autumn. Um, arguably 1300s a little bit short for a first up, that's my main concern, but certainly has class on the side. From the white gate, probably needs to go back to find some cover. Okay, and we, over the 1100, we have best guess, last start winner, barrier one. Very good winner last start, and Lee Begorian retains the ride as a result. My claim is full three kilo claim, but I think one and a half or two kilos will certainly be some sort of a help. Um, yeah, good draw. I guess the 1100 is a touch short, but it's a nice race for him, and Fleming, oh, sorry, Rose Hill, the big long straight, he'll appreciate. 
Okay, into the Open 1800, we have black on gold, barrier two, in a small field of six. Yeah, Kathleen O'Hara rides. Um, she'll be riding in the Melbourne Cup on Tuesday. And, uh, um, yeah, it's good to have jockeys like Kathy. We've got Josh Parr riding for us. Um, who else is riding? Right? Jay. Jay Ford. All your second-tier riders, but very good second-tier riders. That. Constantly riding against your Bowmans, your Shins, your Schofields, etc. Um, week in, week out. So um, good to have these guys and girls aboard. And Kathy deserves to ride on this horse. I think she's had a bit of success for the owners as well. So it's backing up within seven days. Great run last start on a questionable uh, track that he would, that he liked. So um, light my chance, Charlie. Okay, your race six were very well represented. We have Morse Platoon last start winner, Lee. Keeps the road. Yeah, he's got a big weight this week. Um, the track was a little more forgiving last start, but um, gee, they haven't raced here at Russell for about five weeks and had a good look at the track this morning when we walked across it and it's like carpet, plenty of grass and gives a lot of relief regardless of weather conditions. So I think it should suit most runners on Saturday and therefore suit more to two. Okay, we also have cars off, second up, barrier two. A good run first up, no luck whatsoever at Doom and when running second. Um, he seems to have come through that race well and travelled down to Sydney in good shape. Um, we're finding these horses returning from Queensland have confidence and good fitness. Um, so right distance, I think he's going to be a much better horse this prep than last. He still did a good job but didn't quite know how to attack the line. I'm sure this preparation he will. Okay, we also have Mornington having his first start for the stable. Yeah, interesting runner. Um, has had no official trial, just taken along quietly, done plenty of track work and a few jump outs. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how he goes first up. Um, no pressure, of course, um, but you always respect the horses that Mr. Pegan purchases from overseas. We've had a good, a good run with them. And Malmas on the quick backup barrier nine. A little bit concerned about the draw. He's still, we're still working out his racing habits, and um, yeah, he's he's a good example of why you've got to take most of these horses through their distances and not throw them in the deep end. And I guess you could say that's a bit of a concern about Mornington. But um, once we get this horse worked out, I'm sure he can win a good race or two. He's won a couple in Australia, but only been the provincial type races in Melbourne, so. Yeah, once we get a right, right distance, etc., I'm sure he can win. But whether we run him from that will I go, I'm not too sure, Charlie. Okay. And into race seven, we have in times of war, barrier six, Lemagorian. Having a look at her form this morning, she's run one first or second in her last eight starts. Every start. Yeah, every start. Unfortunately, she's only won one, but she's been narrowly beaten in many of those seconds. Um, I like the horse. She's the best class one in the country. She would be, yeah. So um, I think she's well placed, um, got a reasonable draw. Six, Lee McGorin. Yep. Claiming three, she winning Charles. And overstep, barrier 11. Yeah, might give her a miss. We'll wait till Saturday morning to see how many scratchings are on the race, but there's a 1200 metre fillies and mares race next week. She's come up from Melbourne. Thought she was a bit poor in condition and coped um, at the start of the prep. But she has improved over the last two weeks, so I think once we get her in the right race, right draw, etc., she can bounce back to form, but it's not about Saturday. Okay, into race eight, we have Invincible, Josh Parr, Barrier One. Yeah, he'll appreciate good, good track. Um, he was scratched from Randwick last week, he wouldn't like that track at all. Um, good jockey, distance is a bit short, but as long as he's attacking the line, just He's either yes or no, this horse, he's, he's never in between, so hopefully he can have some the confidence. Yeah, confidence horse. And we also have Zumbelina on the back up, Rachel King, barrier six. Yeah, much better draw, she had a, a wide gate last start and the wet track to contend with. Fortunately, she's pulled up well and looks a nice race for her. And into the lucky last, we have New Universe, second up, barrier 11, Jay Ford. Yeah, awkward gate again, as it was last start. Um, Got a long way out of his ground, got worked up prior to the race, Very everything well was against him, so did still finish third. Um, I would have liked to have seen him draw well, and I would have said he was a genuine winning chance, but might just need a little bit of luck from the gate. Okay, and Wayanka, barrier 13. 
Beat him more luck from the game. Yeah, I guess so, but he gets back anyway, and forget he went around last week. I know Jason Collett said he handled the track and didn't know whether he was applying himself, but it's hard to get them to bounce back within seven days, but I think he's going well. I look at him this morning, he looks good. He's certainly not tucked up. I think he barely had a run last week. And high missed Barry 8, the Norton goes on. Big help, we've had a bit of success with this nor these Norton bits. We have. It's not, not, not the perfect gear change, but gee, it gives the horses a bit more respect. And I think especially the way we race in Australia, where it's, it's sort of stop-start, they don't roll like they do in Europe, in England, America, Japan. Uh, but I think that type of bit does a suit does suit Australian racing. So uh, I think it will suit this horse. He was a bit aggressive last week, even over racing or racing over only 1400 with a good rider in Brown. So um, Lee McGorian rides, playing three, fit horse. Well, I think he's an underrated horse. He is. He should be way way above these at this stage. Anyway, we'll go straight up to Doombin, where we have My Giuliano, Barrier 8, 2200. Run two good seconds in his last three starts. Comes back in trip, but the Sorry, stable, 2000. stable reports that he's, um, he's going very well. I don't know if he got a bomb this week, the best of the morning, did he? No, I think the same horse who gets it every week did. Because no. Yeah. No, there was another one this week. Might have been. No, I know who it is. It's the very next horse we're about to talk oh, about. Well, there you go. So, um, Stable's going great up there. Paul's doing a fantastic job. And his team, of course, with great staff. Um, well, staff like it and horse like it. Horses like it. Into the open mile. So Orgerson. Was it? Best of the morning. Best of the morning on Tuesday. Yeah. Um, he's gone to the top of the weights for winning an open last start. He's drawn better this week. Barrier six, Michael Cahill, small field. Ah, oh, it's not a small field. We've got oh, we're half the that's twelve or thirteen in it. So um, he'll run well. A horse like him loves confidence, and he's got confidence back. Okay, and Montauk resuming same race. Yeah, he um, geez, he had a big preparation last time in. Uh, Huge, he won an award for it. We did. <laughs> Hit the most runs in uh, most metropolitan New runs in New South Wales. So, plus he was um, he would have probably won three or four races, won a few hundred thousand prize money, second in I think a Grafton Cup, should have yeah. won a Water Cup. Yeah, so um, he'll have a run in Queensland, come down to Sydney in a light summer, and then be prepared for the Water Cup again. Okay, and race eight we have Calissimo, also with the top weight. Barrier 8. Backing up from last week, she had a wide gate, got a long way back, finished off well. She's in good shape, drawn a little bit better, races against her own age group this week, last week it was against the older horses. Be a nice way to finish off the day. Okay, perfect. Have a lovely weekend folks. And you Chris.